Welcome to this episode from the Science Revision channel. Today's lesson is all about food tests. This is one of your required practicals. And your objectives is to be able to test for the presence of carbohydrates, so that's types of sugars, lipids, that's your fats, and proteins using qualitative reagents. To be clear, qualitative, that means you're testing for the presence rather than the number. So first of all, we're going to test for starch using iodine. So I've got some cereal here, and I've got some iodine. Iodine, when we actually look at its original color, it's like an orangey-brown color. And when starch is present, we can see the color change to a blue, dark blue, black color. Now, normally we carry this out in a test tube, where we crush up the food first of all, then put a few drops on. Uh, but this experiment illustrates it perfectly well. So you can see the color goes a blackish, dark blue color. Next, this is testing for reducing sugars. So reducing sugar, for example, is like glucose. Here I have some glucose. Um, I'm going to make up a mixture of glucose. I've got a water bath, which I'll need, a boiling tube or test tube. And the idea is, is that my glucose over here, I'm going to make up a sugary mix. Obviously, we'd be testing food ordinarily, so it might be a piece of bread we might have in there. It could be some sweets or chocolate or something like that that we want to test for sugar. And the idea is, is that we use the substance called Benedict's solution. So the glucose goes in, I'll add a drop of water just to make it into a solution. So there's my sugary solution. Now with Benedict's, what we want to do is we want to add a few drops to it. So Benedict's, we can see, is blue in color. When I add a few drops, and the solution should go blue. And what you want to be able to do is to be able to stick it into a water bath at about 75 degrees, and you want to have it in there for about five minutes. Okay, so here's my water bath. It's already slightly warm. You can see the temperature starting to rise there already. Uh, so I stick in my, uh, my boiling tube with the thermometer in, and I stick it on a Bunsen burner to heat up. So after a few minutes, you can see there's a green layer forming there already. The green layer means that there is actually some sugar present. If we leave it for a bit longer and that green layer starts to change, so it goes to like an orangey color, that means there's a moderate amount of sugar that's actually there. If it starts to go more of a brick red color, and you can see it changing here in my video, um, that means there's actually quite a lot of sugar present. And we know there's a lot of sugar present because we put a lot of glucose inside. So that's the color of Benedict's. And if you look at the boiling tube over here, we can see it's almost like an orangey brick red color. Next one is a test for protein. This is called Biuret reagent. Again, it looks like Benedict's. I've got some ham here. I've got a mortar and pestle. And then I've got a boiling tube. The first thing I've got to do is I've got to crush up some of this meat here. Um, to try and release some of the proteins from it. Uh, also to get it into sort of a bit of a solution to mix it. So I'm crushing away here. Lovely. And I want to try, oh look at that. Should use some some uh, some tweezers there, some forceps there. Using the fingers isn't very good, uh, but there you go. We've got some inside the boiling tube, and then the idea is we're going to add some biuret um, to it. Now I add quite a bit of biuret, a few more drops on top, and then you want to give it a really really good shake. And you can see me shaking it fast here. If it goes a pink or purplish color, like you could just see there. That means that there is protein present. Right now this next test is for lipids and there's two ways that we can test for it. One is using ethanol. So inside my uh, little bowl of here, my mortar and my pestle, I've got a bit of bacon with a bit of fat on it, I'm sort of crushing it up, trying to release some of the, the, the fat from it, which is obviously my lipids. Uh, and I am now correctly going to use some little forceps over here to drop it in and then the idea is is i want to stick just a little bit of distilled water inside that there so there we go 
Now what I want to do is get my ethanol. You'll notice it says highly flammable on the exam board are keen that you notice that. Okay, so I put a few drops of ethanol inside and the idea is, is that I should give it a good shake. Remember, normally with fats in water, lipids in water, uh, they don't mix. So I'm going to give it a really, really good shake here with the ethanol. And hopefully what I should notice as I let it settle is I should see a cloudy layer forming on the top. It's barely noticeable, but it's just about there. There's a cloudy layer. The second test that you need to know for testing lipids is using Sudan 3. This is a red, um, a really, really red pigmented uh, solution mixed in with ethanol. So again, here I've got my fat. You can see me crushing it over here. I put some inside my, um, my boiling tube or test tube, and then I add, uh, as we did before, a little bit of distilled water, and then some of the Sudan 3, and give it a gentle shake. So in goes the fat over here. Give it a gentle shake with the water. And then I put in a few drops of my Sudan 3. And what I should notice is, as I stick it in, the whole solution starts to go reddish in color, but the lipids on the top actually get attached to the Sudan 3. And we should end up, as it settles, with a red ring, like a red layer collecting around the top. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a shake, um, just to let the lipids inside uh, mix with the Sudan 3. Probably shaking a bit more than I should there. <laughs> um, but let's leave it to settle. And then hopefully what we should notice is a red ring starting to form around the top like a red layer. You can just about see it there. Okay, so there are our tests. So let's have a look at the table now that you could fill in. There is a worksheet link to this lesson. So first of all, we've got our iodine solution, which detects starch. And if we look over here, the original color is an orangey brown. And if, I'd, if starch is present, then we get a dark blue, black color forming. Okay, the next one on the table, when we look for reducing sugars, we know that the test reagent we use is Benedict solution. We mustn't confuse it with biuret because biuret is also blue. It looks very, very, very similar. Um, but Benedict solution is the test for sugars reducing sugars. It starts off blue, it'll stay blue if there's no sugar present, but it will go green, then orange, then red, dependent on how much sugar is actually present. If there's a tiny little bit, it will go green. If there's a lot, it will go red. So next one, we've got biuret solution over here. If it's, uh, it's a test for proteins, uh, the reagent is blue and it will go a pink or purple color. Um, dependent on um, on, the, on whether protein is present. The last one we've got, we saw, was the ethanol test for lipids and the Sudan 3 test for lipids as well. If there is no, if we get a negative result, we get a colorless upper layer. In other words, it just mixes when we give it a shake, but we don't actually get a cloudy layer forming. But if there is lipids, we get a cloudy upper layer that is when there's ethanol. And then if we use that Sudan 3, which remember had that really rich red color, then we get that upper layer forming, which is red in color. Okay, so that's for Sudan 3. I really hope that's been useful and added some value to your studies. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or leave a comment below.